Welcome back to Home Gym Hacks and Reviews. I have a packed video today with the return of the PowerTech Peck Fly attachment in a way that I've found to make it even better. I've sold even more gym equipment, find out what I sold and how much I got for it, an updated gym tour, and more. Stay tuned. After selling my Titan Fitness Peck Fly machine, more on that later, I decided that it was time to get my third PowerTech Peck Fly attachment and third attachment organizer. I took advantage of the 10% off site-wide sale that PowerTech offered over Labor Day. I placed this order on September 1st, it shipped on September 5th, and I received it on September 11th. FedEx did me right this time. I received both boxes on the same day, both boxes were in excellent condition, and they were only delayed one day. With an attachment or two, the organizer isn't entirely necessary, but with three or four, it definitely makes the attachments look sharper than placing them on the floor. Especially when the pet fly attachment is added because it's the biggest and heaviest of the four attachments I have. The organizer came excellently packed, and it's only a total of three main pieces that get bolted together. There are adjustable feet which get screwed into the bottom to level it out if it's on uneven floors. The welds look super clean, and I like the plastic caps which help to prevent metal on metal contact. I'll likely spray dry silicone spray into each tube to further increase smoothness. Assembly was about one minute. I would like to see wheels on the attachment organizer, and I even tried to put the organizer on scooters, but it wasn't very balanced. Next, the Peck Fly came equally well packed. Everything is wrapped in plastic, and many of the pieces are wrapped in an extra layer of cardboard for additional protection. There is only one hardware pack, and there is only one page of instructions. I found it extremely easy to assemble and use the attachment organizer to aid in assembly. PowerTech did a good job of covering the handlebars with plastic in the areas that are pre-lubricated. Total assembly time was less than 15 minutes, with the majority of that time being spent bolting on the weight horns. Over two years ago when I first reviewed this attachment, I mentioned how there is a lack of resistance in the beginning portion of each rep. However, after my recent shoulder injury, I'm actually glad for that feature, and many people have told me that is also what they like best about the resistance profile of this fly. Using the attachment like this is great. If you want to add resistance to the beginning of the fly, I show how to do that in my original review. Also, I've always preferred having the bench in the decline position. After really liking the feel of attaching handles to the Titan Peck Fly, I tried to add handles to the PowerTech Peck Fly. First I tried this way, and it wasn't quite right. Then I tried to loop the handles the same way that I did on the Titan, and this didn't work as well as the previous way. Then I had one of those aha moments. This is how the arm looks when it's installed correctly. And this is how it looks when it's installed the opposite way. The handle goes from hanging parallel to the floor to hanging perpendicularly. By changing the orientation of the handles, I feel like I have greatly improved the function of this attachment. By installing the arms backwards and attaching handles from my PowerTech Streamline Functional Trainer, this gives me a little greater freedom of movement, but not so much it feels like a functional trainer with unlimited freedom of movement. In fact, at this point, I prefer this over my functional trainer for flies. Also, way back when, when I did a video comparing the PowerTech Peck Fly attachment to the Titan Fitness Peck Fly, I gave the win to the Titan. However, with this hack, the win goes to PowerTech, largely because I feel a greater contraction at the end of the fly compared to the way that it feels with the Titan machine. A little bit of weight goes a long way, so it's not like the Titan where I need to load it with 200 plus pounds. At the beginning of each rep, the resistance starts moderate and increases as the arms come closer together. Also, the clothespin hack is invaluable with this attachment. Simply retract the knob and connect and disconnect with ease. This just feels more ergonomically correct for me compared to gripping the existing handles. As a result, it feels easier on my hands, wrists, and elbows. There is slightly more tension at the bottom of the rep when compared to the original arm configuration, but it's not shoulder aggravating. I will say that PowerTech never intended for the attachment to be used this way, so if you choose to do this, do so at your own risk. Now you may be wondering, what about the rear delt function on the Titan machine? Believe me, I thought about that before selling it, but I am so happy with one of the hacks that I showed in Leverage M Hacks Part 5 that I am okay with not having a dedicated rear delt machine. Very little weight is needed with this exercise, and there is a pretty consistent resistance profile even when the handles are close together. The Peck Fly attachment is the heaviest of the attachments I own at 40 pounds. It has a 200 pound max weight capacity, which I can't imagine many people getting close to. Each stainless steel weight horn has 10 inches of loadable space. The head pad is a nice feature, and the handle makes it easy to transport. The collars that come with the attachment are decent. I like the cap at the end of the bolt that prevents metal on metal contact, but I would like for the screws to have a feature where they couldn't get disconnected from the collar. Normally I use these as one pound plates. I'm also pretty happy with this hack. 
Now it's not perfect because the resistance doesn't start until the hands are a couple of inches away from the thighs, but it is better than I expected. I hope PowerTech releases a lateral raise attachment, but in the meantime, these daisy chains and revolving handles will get me by, and it just offers variety to my training. Also, for anyone who is wondering, this attachment still doesn't work that great for a reverse fly, but I'll keep trying and hopefully I'll come up with something. The pec fly attachment even stores better with the arms configured this way. I am so glad to have this attachment back and it may sound odd but I couldn't wait for this attachment to be delivered even though this is my third one in the last six years but I figured by changing the arms orientation I could greatly improve the function of the machine. If you purchase this or any PowerTech product please consider using my PowerTech affiliate link that can be found in the description of this video. This attachment sells for $279 so if you already have the workbench or the multipress it's going to be hard to find a more reasonably priced pec fly. This round of sales started with the iron grip dumbbell rack. Although it was similar to my two Marcy dumbbell racks, I wanted to swap it out so that I would have three matching racks. I asked $50 for this and that's exactly what I got. Originally this was my wife's dumbbell rack before we met, so I gave her all the money that I made from this sale so that she could go out and buy herself something real nice. I recently reviewed this rack in a YouTube short, so I won't spend much time here. This one I've had for six years, this one I've had for four, and now this new one. Each has a 1,000 pound weight capacity and obviously they hold up pretty well. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of Marcy's strength training equipment, I do like these dumbbell racks and all three together were less than $300. The next machine to go was the Xmark Fitness CD Calf Raise. This was the machine I've had longer than any other in my present gym. I paid just less than $300 for this in 2019 and because I painted it black with bed liner paint and it wasn't the original paint job, I only asked $100 for it even though they're now presently going for around $400. When I met this guy to make the exchange, I noticed that he was looking at me kind of funny. He then asked if I was on YouTube, so it is cool that people are starting to recognize me. Now we talked for a little while and come to find out this guy is also a big PowerTech fan. He has the lever gym as well as the old school gray PowerTech Streamline Functional Trainer Cable crossover hybrid machine that they had a long time ago. Next I sold the Titan Peck Fly rear delt machine and Rogue Echo bike together to the same strongman competitor who got my first lever gym and second PowerTech leg press. Originally I had the Echo bike listed for $600 and the Titan Fly machine listed for $400. Presently the Echo bike with the fan guard is around $900 and the Titan Fly machine is presently $600. The strongman competitor asked me what's the best I could do if he got both at the same time, so I knocked 100 off of each for a total sale price of $800. I even threw in the 3x6 Rogue Banner. I really liked the Titan Peck Fly machine, but now I like the PowerTech Peck Fly attachment better, and unfortunately the Rogue Echo Bike just wasn't getting used, so I'm glad its best days are ahead of it. Next I sold the Titan Fitness Tibia Dorsey machine for $80. I paid $140 for it, and now it's over $200. I had to drop the price three times before I could find a buyer. And the most shocking sale in my recent equipment sell-off is the Iron Master Quick Lock Adjustable Dumbbell System. With the fixed set of dumbbells I have, I couldn't justify having both. Originally I got these for the Iron Master Gym, but after injuring my shoulder trying to save my hardwood floors during a flat press, I moved the dumbbells back out to the garage and unfortunately they just weren't getting used. I listed the 75 pound set, the stand, the heavy handle kit, the 120 pound add-on kit, and the plate loaded vest for $950. All of those together have a value of around $1,500, although over a year ago I don't think I paid quite that much. For the first couple of days nobody hit me up so I dropped the price to $850 and the guy who got my Squat Max MD contacted me and offered me $800 and I accepted. I was really glad to find out that it was him because I actually owed him one of the support bars from the Squat Max MD so when I gave him the Quick Lock Adjustable Dumbbells I was able to give him that and I am really glad that a repeat customer got two of my favorite products. In my video, How I Gained 20 Pounds in 10 Months, obviously I've lost quite a bit of that, I said this. But I have toyed with the idea of selling all of my commercial equipment and just building my body with PowerTech home gym equipment. I have been known to do some extreme things on this channel, like selling half of my home gym equipment, so don't put it past me to do something extreme again. And that is the direction I'm heading in again. I believe in PowerTech products. I think they offer a lot of versatility, and I think their quality is great for their price point. I've done this one other time in 2019 when I was only using PowerTech products and I got a very good physique with no commercial grade equipment, just good old PowerTech. I'll start by saying having less equipment makes me appreciate the equipment I do have even more and I'm moving away from getting big, heavy, commercial grade pieces of equipment that only offer one exercise in exchange for pieces of equipment that have greater versatility, that are easier to move, 
easier to disassemble, and easier to sell should I choose to upgrade. For example, I just moved the lever gym from my Powertech spare bedroom to the garage. It took me less than 35 minutes to disassemble, move, and put back together. With some of the bigger pieces of equipment that I recently sold, it would have taken me hours to do that, or at least a team of two people. When I sell equipment, I prefer to meet someone in a public location rather than having them come to my house. But with these big heavy pieces of equipment, I need help. And even though my wife is as strong as an ox, she's had two back-to-back -back surgeries, so she can't move anything at the moment. Now the lever gym is back in the garage and I am loving all the versatility that comes with it. I've posted in some shorts and stories some of the exercises I'm doing with it, and many of these can be found in Lever Gym Hacks 5. And in this new garage gym layout, I can officially say the Powertech Lever Gym is my most versatile and best piece of equipment. Beside the Lever Gym is the Multipress. Like the Lever Gym, this delivers a lot of versatility, and many of my favorite chest exercises are done right here. Just to give you some perspective, here's what the attachment organizer looks like with four attachments in relation to me. With the way that I have the attachments configured, it really doesn't take up that much space. At basically one horse stall mat, but I love how many quality exercises I can get out of this collection of equipment. Leg extensions, leg curls, pec flies, two quality dip variations, and plenty of preacher curl variations. When I consider how much space each one of these would take up as a dedicated machine and how much each one of these would cost as a dedicated machine, these attachments are a really smart buy for me. Here is one of the extremely well-made Powertech weight trees where I can also store my Easy Curl Bar. This is the Powertech Hyper Crunch, and this exercise replaced the Bodymasters MD216 low back machine. I also moved the new Powertech Compact Leg Sled out to the garage and placed the Body Solid Compact weight tree in front of the footplate. This is incredibly convenient because I can load this machine pretty heavy and it helps to have the plates just a couple of steps away. Here's the Powertech Streamline Functional Trainer where I perform many of my favorite chest, shoulder, and tricep exercises. My fixed set of dumbbells going to 105 pound increments is one of my most prized possessions. My dad is borrowing the True Laps and the Snodes. He loves them both and it seemed like the right thing to do since he let me have these. He has two different places where he trains, his house and his office, and now he has a set of dumbbells in both places. This garage gym is called the Power Plant Gym. This sign has been in here for a couple of years. It was a present from my wife, and I've named this gym the Power Plant Gym for a couple of reasons. First, and the most obvious, is my love for Powertech products. And the other, more personal reason, is all about my wife. When we first met, she was working at a power plant, and many of our first dates were at that power plant. We played softball, basketball, and we lifted weights in her very nice gym that was stocked with hammer strength equipment. So if I ever become famous, this might be a trivia question. Here are my three pieces of Nautilus equipment, and I want to show these spacers that I added between the elbow pads and the handbar brackets. I always felt like this bar was too far away from the pads, and this completely fixes that. There are three 3x4 three horse stall mats that have been cut and holes drilled for the bolts. Here's a closer look at this side of the gym. This is the Cybex Eagle Abductor Adductor, the Time Machine Spider Cam Bicep Curl Machine, the 2ST Super Pullover, and the Next Generation Torso Arm Machine. In case you're wondering, my next machine out here will likely be a leg machine. My wife has gotten her office back and she couldn't be happier and this helps to make our place look and feel less like a gym home and more like a home. The Powertech spare bedroom gym is now empty aside from the banner and weight tree. This winter, I might bring the lever gym back inside. I still have all of my bodybuilding books, including all of my hit books and all of my bodybuilding DVDs in the Powertech gym closet. Here's the signed Mincer 8x10 I got off of eBay. The bonus room above the garage is now a lot more roomy. I kept my two Concept 2 pieces because I do feel they are the gold standard for rowers and skiers. The Abcor will be staying because I'll never make back all the money I paid for this machine as it was ridiculously priced and misrepresented as a light commercial machine. The Titan seated leg curl leg extension will be staying. I truly believe in this machine and the quality of the hack I showed a while back. A 10, 25, or in my case, a 35 pound plate fixes the resistance profile. This is one of my last Titan pieces. The single leg squat roller and the band holder and the dumbbell rack, which has been discontinued, are all that I have left from over 30 pieces of Titan equipment. I can't stand powder coat on weight horns. I don't know who thought this was a good idea. I considered selling the Signature Fitness hip thrust machine, but my wife wouldn't let me, and this is one battle I decided to concede pretty quickly. My list of affiliations has greatly been reduced as of late. I ended my affiliation with Rogue, Fettle Fitness, Angle 90 Grips, and Mad Spider. It's just not genuine for me to be an affiliate for those companies if I don't have any of their equipment. 
I am also considering ending my affiliation with Titan and Iron Master. However, I still do believe in the Titan Fitness Seated Leg Extension Leg Curl. And with Iron Master, I am really proud of my Iron Master reviews. Even though the production quality isn't that great, I will always revere those videos as being information over presentation. So I'm not quite sure what to do with Iron Master because the only piece that I have left from them is their calf block after buying almost everything they sell within the last two years. Not including Iron Master or Titan, who again, I may step away from. My only affiliations are with PowerTech and GymPen. I don't feel the need to have 20 different affiliates. Instead, I would rather focus my concentration on one brand, the brand that has been in my gym longer than any other, the brand that I started using 15 years ago, and the brand that presently fills my garage gym, PowerTech. Also, I have online friends who are affiliates for Bells of Steel, GetRx, and Bulletproof Fitness, just to name a few. So when those companies contacted me and offered for me to be an affiliate for them, I declined because I don't want to spread the affiliate pie so thin. I try not to talk about affiliate links very much, maybe about two seconds per video. Commissions are awesome and they help to pay some of the expenses that go into having a channel. However, I am far more interested in companies knowing that I am helpful to their brand. So for example, anytime you use my PowerTech affiliate link, it lets PowerTech know that I've helped you and that I am spreading the word about their brand. So please, anytime you make a PowerTech purchase, please consider using my PowerTech affiliate link. It's done directly through their webpage and it is secure. For those who ask for more Greyhounds, here's a quick video of my boy taking off. Unfortunately, the yard isn't quite big enough for him to reach his top speed of 45 miles an hour. I recently posted a YouTube short of many of my banners coming down. Banners that have been in this garage for four years, but now that the Rhino is gone, it really doesn't make much sense for me to have a Rogue banner. I've never owned a piece of rep equipment or a piece of fringe sport equipment, so it makes no sense to have those banners up. So now they have come down, and home gym hacks and reviews and power tech banners have gone up. Now my garage feels much more like home gym hacks and reviews. I designed all of these new banners in Canva and then went to Printful to fulfill the order. When making a selection for a banner, I highly recommend their 18 ounce vinyl option as it's much more durable than the other option. And I like the hemming option as opposed to no hemming at all. In the garage, I didn't need grommets, which helps me save some money. And I just hang these with clear tacks. I am not the most artistic person, but I do like bold and simple designs, which is why most of my gym is black and white. By the way, I just went back and watched the previous clip. And I think it's funny how small I look compared to these big banners. This one is 4x8 and it cost about $91 before shipping. These three are 3x8 three and they cost about $70 each before shipping. And the smaller PowerTech banner is 6x3 and it cost about $55. For comparison purposes, the 3x8 Rogue banner cost $63 before shipping. I would much rather spend an additional $10 to advertise my own brand. I may end up doing a giveaway with my old banners. Thanks for watching everyone. I appreciate you. Take care.